morning. Please, yeah, please be seated. So, um, happy Mother's Day to the mothers uh, among us this morning. Um, I gotta say, I was thinking just before the service, I'm always conscious on Mother's Day and Father's Day and uh, days like this that there may be people sitting in the congregation for whom this is a painful time too. Um, maybe you've just lost a mother over the past year um, and maybe for whatever reason, um, this is a time that, uh, that raises for you some painful or sad memories as well. And so I just want you to know that I, I appreciate that and, uh, and uh, I'm with you as well. So happy Mother's Day to our mothers. Announcements. Yes, Lorna. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm Lenore English, as most of you know. And yesterday, you know, I hope that you know, that we had a very successful plant sale. Extra special thanks to everyone who donated, who came and helped, and who made the day such a successful one for the public that came. I have over 30, I think I've got 35 aprons to wash in my, our laundry room, so we had a lot of volunteers yesterday. In terms of funds, we made $4,400 yesterday. Wow. And to me, the funds are a secondary element. The fellowship and the working together is the main element and the community outreach component, too. Um, we have things to sell still, so that number will rise. Now it is by donation with plants on the bell tower side of the hall. And in the hall itself, at Coffee Fellowship, you'll see displays still set up and redone so things are being sold by donation just today tomorrow we do the packing up and we give everything that we have in that hall to other churches other organizations so they can make income from those things we do not keep things every year every sale most things are new the concession uh, was a new spot for them after all was said and done, they made $478. And in the hall, the donation bowl for the Ukrainian relief made 305 So we have about $780 so far to give to the Ukrainian Cultural Center for their refugee resettlement. In the hall, there are muffins and cookies that were prepackaged, and, and there is a donation bowl between them, so I assume that 780 will rise because we'll make a little more money. And uh, I have the contact to make sure that this money goes where we want it to go. The public that came and put money in that bowl were many asked questions about whether the money was going directly to local refugees. They were very, very happy that that is the, what we are doing. So thank you to everyone who supported our Ukrainian help program. And you should also know that the Women's Guild has last month gave $500 to the Compassionate Warehouse to help ship a container overseas. So we've done, we're doing, we've done two nice things so far, and hopefully we will do, be able to do more. So thank you very, very much. I'll see you in the hall at coffee. Thank you, to, thank you to you, Lenore, and to everyone who came out yesterday and and uh, worked and supported the event. It was a uh, wonderful uh, day, um, lots of good fellowship and camaraderie, and uh, we had a really good turnout, I, I thought. So um, congratulations to all of you. It was, a, it was a day, very worthy day. And I also, may I say one more yep. thing? I wanted to personally thank you. 
Oh. Oh. For bringing donuts for the concession <laughs> and for buying nice things for <laughs> the My pleasure to be there yesterday. Uh, birthdays and anniversaries. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries? Seven in the Goddard family? This month? Wow. May is a very popular month for the Goddards. Uh, but Peter had his 86th birthday yesterday, and Ellen, yours was last week, right? On the 5th? Okay. So. And you're 80, okay. Just a young slip of a thing compared to your husband. <laughs> Any other birthdays or anniversaries that we need to celebrate today, knowledge today? <laughs> Jim's thrilled. <laughs> Happy birthday, Jim. <laughs> How do you want to do this, uh, Madame Warden? What do you suggest we do? Okay, well, you're on your own. Does somebody want to lead that? Because I have no idea how to sing it. So Lenore says she does, so come on up. Do you want to? I've got to say, Peter, I have never met someone who has been, who was baptized and been a member of a parish for 86 years for their entire life. That is really amazing. So when we're very blessed to have you here. Uh, uh, he is the repository of all uh, the history, yes. Yes, thank you. I, 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 I'm, I plan to do that at some point, Ellen, for sure. All right, um, so I have one announcement, um, which is that on uh, the 25th of May, from 3 until 4.30, we're going to be holding what I hope will be the first of several um, offerings of a visioning workshop called Gathering Stories. And this is going to be an opportunity for, for you, the parishioners of St. Michael's, to tell one of your favorite stories uh, about your positive experiences here at St. Michael's. We're going to be telling these stories to each other, and then as a group, we're going to look at the story and try to identify the qualities of the, this parish that make it a place that people want to be a part of. The theory behind this approach is called appreciative inquiry, and it focuses on telling the good news stories that occur within a parish. Appreciative inquiry has been found to be a very powerful tool with organizations seeking to clarify their visions. And so I think this could be a really um, useful tool to employ as you're trying to um, find your vision. So this, th this workshop is going to be capped at 10 participants because obviously if people are telling stories, we need time for everyone to tell their story. So if you're interested and you don't get, get into the first session, don't worry, we'll, we'll do it again. Um, and more information is going to be coming your way uh, in the next week. So I'm intending to do an email blast and we'll make sure that there's some information about this in the bulletin next week about how to register and, uh, and so forth. Okay. So on that note, we begin by acknowledging that we worship on the lands, traditional lands of the Tarslip Char First Nation, and we recognize that there is the hard work of reconciliation um, required to find a new relationship of compassion and respect with the First Nations peoples, and we ask for God's help as we go forward in that work. Let us pray.
Almighty God, to you our hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. O God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the covenant, make us perfect in every good work to do your will and work in us that which is well pleasing in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll sing together the glory of, of, of hymn number 365. A reading from Acts. In Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, who heard that Peter was there, sent two men to him with a request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside. Then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God.
Psalm 23, the refrain is, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall be in want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me through the still waters, refrain. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall no fear no evil, for you are with your rod and your staff and covered me, refrain. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed me with oil and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me in all the days of my life. And will I dwell in the house of the Lord forever? Refrain, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. A reading from Revelation. In my vision, I saw there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white? And where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple, and the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more, and thirst no more, the sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb is at the center of the throne and will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Our hymn before the gospel is The King of Love, My Shepherd Is, hymn number 520.
Holy Gospel, John 10, 22 to 30. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. The festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple, in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Please be seated. I love the book of Acts because I love stories about birth. And Acts is a story of a Christian community being born. It is an account of the first Christian community. They're starting to figure out who they are and what they are called to be. They are working out who is in and who is out. Spoiler alert, everybody's welcome. They're learning about the power of the risen Jesus working among them. They are, if you will, getting a vision of what this new community is supposed to look like. One of the first characteristics of this community is clear very early on. The power of the resurrected Jesus is alive and well, and it turns things upside down. Saul, or Paul, the first Christian, the, the, the Christian killer, is transformed by the resurrected Jesus. He's now prepared to die for his belief that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. A lowly fisherman, Peter, who denied Jesus before his, his crucifixion, becomes Peter, the bold leader of this new community. In today's first reading, we learn about a woman, Tabitha, also known as Dorcas, who is much loved for her charitable works. What makes Tabitha, one of the things that makes Tabitha truly a remarkable figure, is that we hear her described with the word disciple. It is the only place in the New Testament where we find a woman being called the Greek word for disciple. Tabitha is truly a unique woman. And it is extraordinary that the earliest Christian community should count a woman among its disciples. The evidence is overwhelming. In this new community, there is power at work to change things mightily. It is a power able to make something out of what the world assumes to be nothing. The group of Christians organizing itself in Acts is made up of people who stand beside the vulnerable and outcast members of society. The disciples who were present when Tabitha died called for Peter to come to them immediately. Now we're told that among that group who were there when Tabitha died is, a, is some widows. In those days, to be a widow was to be among the lowest of the low. If you didn't have a man to take care of you, if you didn't belong to a man, you were nobody. Yet Peter went when he heard the widows were in need. Their hope was gone. The one who provided for them and made sure that they had what they needed, this, this Tabitha, was gone. When Peter went into the place where they had put Tabitha's body, he did the only thing that he could think of to do. He prayed. No matter how bad things are, we can always pray. 
even when we are not sure what else to do. Well, you know as well as I do that there's a fair bit of skepticism about intercessory prayer these days. Does it really do any good to pray for someone in need? Well, quite a few years ago now, we were living in Suffield, Alberta, in the middle of the Bald Prairie, and good friends of ours um, were, were traveling west to Vancouver, and they stopped at our pl place along the way. And as we, we sat down to dinner, they proceeded to bring us up to date on what had been happening in their lives. And what they told us was devastating. Their 34-year-old daughter had been diagnosed with the most virulent kind of leukemia. The survival rate for this particular type of cancer is extremely low. These people, our friends, were both ordained ministers, and they had connections with Christians around the world. As word got out about this woman's disease, literally thousands of people around the globe started to pray for her. The treatment for this cancer involves completely blasting the body with radiation to kill all of the cancer cells. Of course, as the cancer cells are killed off, so is the patient's immunity to illness, which leaves them vulnerable to other sicknesses. Our friend's daughter had gone through one cycle of this treatment, and when she went for her follow-up appointment with the oncologist, he told her that even though new cells were growing again in her bone marrow, they could not find any evidence that the cancerous cells were regenerating themselves. On other, in other words, indications were that the cancer had gone into remission. She required at that time two more treatments of this type before the prescribed treatment was finished, but everyone was cautiously optimistic that she was one of the folks who would survive. Well, many years later, I can report to you that she is still very much alive. Our friends and their daughter believe prayer played a powerful role in this remission. And though they are profoundly grateful, they don't know how to understand it. Are there different types of healing brought about by prayers that don't necessarily include a cure for disease? Why should their daughter be cured through prayer and others not? There are many questions about prayer, but regardless of whether or how you we were able to answer them. From the beginnings of the Christian community, its members have prayed for each other when they were in need. We can, and indeed we must, always pray. Peter prayed over Tabitha, and then he did something else that is very significant. He acted. He reached out his hand, and he helped her to stand up. We are called to be people of prayer, but we are also called to be people of action, reaching out a hand to those in need to help them get back on their feet again and be restored to fullness of life. Prayer without action is incomplete. This call to action is referred to several times in the readings today. There are those wonderful verses in Revelation 7. They will hunger and thirst no more, the sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat, for the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. No more hunger, no more thirst, the needy being led to springs of the water of life. St. John was writing about the kingdom of God here, but as followers of Jesus, we are called to work to bring the kingdom of God into being now in our midst. It is we who are called to bring relief to the needy. We are to be people of action. In the 23rd Psalm, we read about the Lord as the shepherd who makes us lie down in green pastures, restores our souls, protects us from our enemies, who is with us even in our final hours. The Lord is active. He is a shepherd who stands with the lost and the weary. He doesn't desert them. Jesus echoes that again in the gospel reading from John. God is the shepherd willing to stand with his sheep against the authorities, even until death. God is a God of action and his followers are, fo are called to follow 
in this way. Acts is a story of a Christian community under formation, clarifying its vision, discerning the way that God would have them go. We learn a lot about this fledgling community in that little story about Tabitha. It was a community that valued the gifts of all members, regardless of gender or social status. In this earliest of Christian communities, members aligned themselves with the vulnerable and with those in need. This community was a place where people continued to have hope amid, in the midst of darkness. People in this community prayed for each other and they followed that prayer up with action. They did what they could to make sure the kingdom of God was alive in their world and accessible to everyone they met. As this parish of St. Michael's works on clarifying its vision, these are character, tr characteristics of a Christian community worthy of consideration. Amen. For our creed, we will sing hymn number 44, I Believe in God Almighty. O God, our shepherd, you spread a table before us and reassure our hearts with your guiding care. Hear our prayers for all your people as we say, God of grace, hear our prayer. Guide the church in gentleness and peace that we may hear and know your voice amid the clamoring around us. Help us to follow your commandment to love one another and live out that love in truth and action. 
We pray for the whole church and for those who serve in ministry. We pray for our primate Linda, our interim national indigenous bishop Sydney, our metropolitan Lynn, our bishop Anna, and our interim priest Janine. We pray for St. Philip by the Sea, Lanceville, and for the territory of the People Anglican Church Steering Committee. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church in Rwanda. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, our shepherd, be present among our leaders and with those who exercise authority for the nations of the world, that they may guide us along right pathways for your name's sake. God of grace, hear our prayer. You have given your life for the protection of your people. Open our eyes to see the needs of our sisters and brothers throughout the world, to those who seek refuge from war and oppression. And we pray especially for all those affected by the ongoing war in Ukraine. O oh God, strengthen and encourage us to respond. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving shepherd, anoint the hearts of those who carry heavy burdens this day and restore their capacity for hope and healing. Hear us as we bring the prayers of our hearts to you. We give thanks for prayers answered and for your capacity to hear and respond to our needs. God of grace, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers for those who have walked through the valley of the shadow of death. Grant that they may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We remember especially today any of our mothers who have died. Rest eternal grant unto them and let light perpetual shine upon them. God of grace, hear our prayer. Reassure our hearts, O God, with the comfort of your guiding presence, that we may know that you are with us. Strengthen us to join in the Spirit's work of leading all people into your divine abundant love, that goodness and mercy may follow us all the days of our life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Would you please stand? My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And please share the peace with each other. And our offertory hymn is 56. Is it 56? It's hymn number 56. I am the bread, the bread of life. Peace be with you.
God of loving care, you spread before us the table of life and give us the cup of salvation to drink. Keep us always in the fold of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Shepherd. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise for the glorious resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal lamb who has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he destroyed death and by his rising to life again, he has won for us eternal life. Therefore, joining our voices with the whole company of heaven, we sing our joyful hymn of praise to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. For the breaking of the bread, we use form eight on page 213. Lord, we died with you on the cross. We were buried in your tomb. Live in us that we may live in you. The gifts of God for the people of God. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Okay, thank
Let us pray. <clears throat> God of steadfast love, watch over the church. Glory to God. Peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day and always. <clears throat> our concluding hymn is Ye Choirs of New Jerusalem, hymn number 216. Christ is risen, alleluia. Thank you, uh, Don.